Hi, this is Emily of Beauties and Headcanons. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Hey, this is Jerry Strauss, host of Hollywood Happy Plays here on Public House Media. Thank you for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. And once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Hollywood Happy Place, where we talk with and about all of your favorite names from the worlds of TV, movies, music, whatever entertains you. We are getting up close and personal with those people right here on HHP. A new show comes out every two weeks. So don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Hollywood Happy Place. Thank you again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Throughout history, the course of sports has been shaped by one thing, the fans. From the moments you never dreamed of... the moments that still give you nightmares. Behind the bag, it gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight, and the Mets win it. He's in. Patriots win the Super Bowl. Brady has his fifth. Through the good and the bad, fans have helped change the games we watch and the players we love. They may not be the most logical people. You are a factory of sadness. I'll see you Sunday. But they know their teams better than anybody. They'll blow in the ninth. You may not always see them, but you know where to find them. After all, there's nothing quite like the view from the cheap seats. Broadcasting as part of the Public House Media Network. Grab a chair and enjoy all there is in the the cheap cheap seats. seats. And good morning. Welcome to this Friday edition of the cheap seats. I'm your host matt coin along with jake holmes jake how you doing this morning hey pretty good how are you matt i am i'm doing great it's uh it's beautiful out here i'm enjoying the spring summer weather and excited for today's show i think we have a good one lined up uh just before we get started though wanted to remind you all that uh we are made possible uh presented by public house media uh, as always, you can listen to our shows uh, on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spreaker, uh, pretty much anywhere you can get your podcasts, uh, wherever you choose to go. Uh, visit us at thephmedia.com uh, for more information on the show and other shows uh, that Public House Media presents to you, as well as get some awesome swag for the cheap seats as well as other shows and make sure you have uh, like us on Facebook where you can see our daily poll question uh, on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays as uh, every week we come out on Mondays with Christian and Jonathan, Wednesdays with Keith and Max and then Fridays with Jake and myself. So Jake, we're going to get right into it this morning. Uh, I'm going to start uh, with a headline that uh, is actually a big headline so I'm not going to even be a yinzer today. This is actually a big headline. Um, as you know, Jake Anthony Rizzo. Uh, I don't think it was an a, question, a questionable slide uh, against uh, the Pirates a few nights ago. Uh, I thought it was a dirty slide, and but this pat or on Wednesday night, uh, the Pirates, the Cubs at least think there was a retaliation, but I do not think it was. Uh, I think it was uh, Joe Musgrove, Musgrave, however you all like to say it. Um, I think he slid into second base uh, for a pitcher who hasn't probably slid in 57 years. Uh, You can see it was clearly an awkward slide. He slid in, uh, went past the bag, stood up, and bumped into... uh, I can never... It's Baez, right, Jake? Yeah, Javier Baez. Yeah, yeah. I can never... I don't know why. I always say Baez for some reason. It's a weird Um, spelling. Yeah, so... Uh, what, what do you what say you about this, Jake? You think it was uh, it was meant to be dirty? Benches did clear. Uh, nothing really happened. But I, uh, with all that said, real quick before you give yours, uh, he looked like a monster out there. By the way, uh, after he slid, I didn't realize Musgrove was so tall. Yeah, he's a he's a big boy, and I guess he had some choice words too for for a few uh, Cubs once. And once the bench is cleared and even the bullpen's cleared, but I'm with you. And this is, granted, it is from one yinzer to the other, but 
Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I don't think there was any intent about it. You know, I mean, that was two nights ago. If the if the Pirates wanted to retaliate, they would have done it. Um, at Rizzo's next at bat, they would have beamed him in the backside. Yeah. But yeah. I, in, in Musgrove, like you said, he probably hasn't slid since high school before joining the Pirates. He was at Houston Astro uh, in the American League. Probably hasn't probably hasn't been on base for since high school. So I, I, I see no ill will in that. Um, just probably just just something to uh, just to get the feathers ruffled. I, I, I don't see it as any more than that. Yeah. yeah. And we'll touch more on the on baseball a little later in the show. Talk about uh, just some of the divisional races. The uh, <clears throat> amateur draft is coming up June 4th, I believe. So uh, that's right around the corner as well. So, uh, Jake, uh, what other quick headlines has uh, kind of caught your eye over the last few days? Yeah, just uh, just Thursday morning, Zidane Zidane, uh, the head coach of Real Madrid, uh, resigned uh, kind of abruptly. This just coming a week after, less than a week actually, after a third consecutive Champions League title. Uh, it's huge news. It shocked Twitter. On it certainly shocked shocked Twitter. I um, mean, really, all the sports world on Thursday morning. It's a big uh, it, it's it's a big development uh, coming out of the sport of soccer. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. I was surprised by seeing. I don't know, uh, you know, too much about uh, the about soccer in the Champions League, but I was surprised by seeing, especially after you win three in a row. So uh, that's uh, all quick headlines. We, uh, I mean, I do you have anything else today, Jake? One thing that I did yeah. want to touch on that that I thought was pretty cool. Um, of course, Wednesday night, a goose delayed, uh, wild goose delayed the Angels Tigers yeah. game. But um, but this one thing that I caught um, the other day that uh, makes sports so cool, um, and this is why sports are so freaking awesome. You know, uh, obviously, only a week before the Vegas Go- only, less than a week before the Vegas Golden Knights played their first ever game in mm-hmm. Dallas, there was. Of course, the largest mass shooting in uh, United States history. So recently, two of the survivors of that shooting had a baby girl. Uh, their last name Sugar. Uh, their last name Sugar. The Sugars had a baby girl and named it Riley. Uh, named her Riley after Riley Smith. Uh, winger oh, that's for the, cool. For the Vegas Golden Knights. So, wow. Uh, it's just one of those things where I don't know about you, Matt, but the reason I love sports so much is that it brings people together in the hardest times. It brings people together in the hardest times, and it's almost like, um, you know, like. like like a segue from you know the terrible things in this world uh because sports are always there and they bring people together like that i thought that was an awesome story yeah you know jake the i think people think the you know las vegas is this you know sin city there's a reason it's called that but i have really really been impressed with what vegas is doing um especially with the shooting uh just the different things reaching out to their community out there and uh, I know well, it was a couple months ago we were talking on the show about uh, Vegas retired. I think it was what – I forget what number. And 58. I, I, I was, dang it, I was going to guess 58. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, they retired 58 for the number uh, of victims in the in the shooting. And, and, and I just thought that was – that was so awesome. I've never seen anything like that uh, from anywhere. And I thought that was a really awesome honor for those families and uh, – you know, I really commend Vegas for coming in year one, not only being successful. That's not what it's all about. Um, it's about, you know, reaching out to their community, making a difference. And I respect Vegas for being the team that they are. I I, I agree with you. Tons of community outreach. And the thing is, people always forget that Las Vegas is a lot more than just a strip. Uh, yes. You know, I mean, yeah. And, you know, you have, you know, it's it's more than just that. It's not a vacation destination. Derek Englund, uh, second pairing defenseman for, for the Vegas Golden Knights, has lived there for years. Uh, and that's his home. And, you know, they, of course, made him their expansion pick from Calgary. He got to come home, which is, um, which, of course, you know, also brings a little bit more of like a family element um, and, you know, kind of that hometown vibe um, from the from the Vegas Golden Knights to their community. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I did not hear about that, so um, I appreciate you tell, telling us all. Uh, make sure you stay with us, uh, with Jake and myself. When we come back, we're just going to keep on the NHL Finals train, uh, talk about the Caps and the Vegas Golden Knights. And uh, we're two games in, and uh, it's been pretty entertaining, so stick with us.
Welcome back to the Cheap Seats. Matt Cord alongside Jake Holmes. And uh, Jake, this is your favorite time, NHL playoffs. And uh, we're getting down to what are we going to talk about when uh, the playoffs are done, Jake? NHL free agency, the, the, entry, the entry draft. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this is, uh, you know, the finals, Golden Knights versus Capitals. Game one uh, was taken by the Golden Knights with a score of 6-4. to four. Uh, And then on Wednesday night, Capitals uh, withstood the Golden Knights 3-2. to two. Jake, I'll be honest with you. I'm surprised how scoring these first two games were. Uh, I don't know about you. I, I thought these would be low-scoring games. That 6-4 to four just shocked me um, just watching it and goal after goal. Uh, Wednesday night, I'll be honest. I mean, I couldn't have done it. Don't get me wrong, but that that save that Holtby had, I, I didn't get to see the game, and I was watching the replays. Uh, and I was just like, uh, it wasn't really that – I mean. It was impressive, but I was just like, it wasn't as impressive as I I was seeing the Twitter, uh, Twitter sphere or Twitter sphere or what I always call it, blowing up. I, what did you think about it? Uh, I'm I'm 100 percent with you. Uh, I I don't think that it was it wasn't that impressive as, of a save. Uh, you know, he he didn't come to he didn't come all that far out on his angle after the deflection off the stanchion behind him, and it's not like it was you know, James Neal or one of their top scoring, scoring wingers. It was Alex Tuck. I mean, he's a power forward. He's a guy that's going to, you know, take the body. He's going to get in front. He's not a sniper. So it, the timeliness of it. Yeah. I mean, it, it was incredibly impressive, you know, with the, with the timing of everything that, that goes in, it's a tie game with less than a minute to go, going into overtime in Vegas, uh, chances are it's going to be a 2-0 series after that. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it was a huge save in that sense, I think. I mean, I agree with you. I, I think that would have been a whole different ending to a game. But, yeah, I mean, it, and that's just, you know, and, and the thing, you know, to your point, it's Alex Tuck. It's it's Alex Tuck, and I like Alex Tuck. I think that he is just as good as Wayne Simmons as far as, you know, the top power forwards in the NHL. Mm-hmm. You know he he's a really nice player, but that's not his role. His role isn't goal scoring. You know what I mean so I don't know if it was James Neal or something and had a little bit more elevation instead of stayed pretty much flat on the surface of the ice. It would have been tougher for Holtby to get the paddle up. I don't know. I I don't think that the save was that impressive, but with the timing of everything, I thought that that was I thought that that was huge. Yeah. All right, I got two questions for you. Uh, concerning game one. I just want to uh, go over the first two games, but I have two questions for, uh, that I'd like to hear your reaction to. Uh, my f- first is Tom Wilson's hit uh, game one. Do you think it was dirty or not? Well, if you um, yeah, uh, if you read a lot of my stuff and you know, you know, f- you know, follow me on Twitter, you know I'm not a fan of Tom Wilson. I'm not a fan <laughs> of him. Uh, I, I don't think that that – I don't think that a lot of things that he does belongs in the sport of hockey in 2018. Mm-hmm. With that said, um, I thought that it was a terrible hit on Jonathan Marsha. So it was 20 feet away from the play. I had no idea what he was doing, not to mention it's a boneheaded play in a close game in the Stanley cup final. Why are you making that play? It's just stupid. Um, but, but the thing that frustrates me about Tom Wilson is he's good. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't need all of that. He doesn't need to goon it up. He he's a good hockey player. He's one of the best penalty killers in the league. He's on their top. He's on their top line with Ovechkin and now Backstrom. It's going to probably be Backstrom for the for the distance. That did not look good with Evgeny Kuznetsov uh, just on Wednesday night. Yeah. But no, Tom Wilson. I I think that he gets. I actually think that he gets too much leeway with the things that he does. And, and but, I'm su- I'm surprised by that too. You know, people uh, watching Capitals fans after. Um, after a few of his hits on uh, in the Penguins series and him taking getting a three game suspension, I, you know I was just amazed that people were defending him. I was like, "Are you kidding me?" You know, and I was getting so sick of hearing people. I talked a little bit about this uh, one day. I went off on a rant, and uh, you know, I, I don't understand. People were trying to defend that hit on oh, who did he hit from the Penguins when he got suspended? Why can't I think? Oh, wow. which, which, uh, oh, when he got suspended, it was Zach Aston. That's it, yeah. yeah. When he hit him, 
I, 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 everyone's like, well, he didn't leave his feet. I said, he hit him so hard and going in an upward motion that he it propelled him off his feet into the bench. And I don't understand why people defend this guy. I I agree with you. I think he's a very dangerous player, uh, when, especially in the playoffs. It's time after time. Uh, I don't think this will be a hit that he's he suspended for, uh, but I, I think that uh, when I first saw it, uh, I kind of kept going back and looking at it, and then it just hit me. I'm like, well, it's not really that dirty. And then it hit me. I'm like, wait, the puck's nowhere near him. I yeah, said, the, the puck was in the offensive zone. Yeah, so I mean, uh, now my other question for you, kind of uh, not really along those lines, but, you know, a, a call that a lot of people thought should have been made. I know the – I know um, – uh, Barry Melrose uh, said that this should have been called, but the Ryan Reeves goal, uh, the uh, I, don't, I'm not, I don't know if you kind of read into on Twitter what people are saying about it, but do you think he should have been penalized uh, for that hit uh, right before the goal that he scored? Oh, definitely. It should have been. A, oh, it should have 100 percent been a penalty. It was the definition of a cross check out in front. Yeah. Uh, you know, some some people some people were like, oh, that stuff happens out in front. Yeah, it does, and it either gets called or it doesn't get called. That should have been called. And you saw on Wednesday night, Alex Tuck, same situation on the same guy. It was on John Carlson. Took the stick to the back to the back of Carlson, got called for a penalty. It was the same exact situation. So I, I, the NHL's cleaning that up a little bit. I think they realize that the Reeves goal should have been overturned. Well, not over. The goal shouldn't have been overturned. The play should have been called dead before he even got the puck. Yeah. So. So, yeah, Reeves should have done it, uh, you know, should have been penalized with that said. Um, this series is exactly where it should be. It should be one to one. You have any other uh, notes for us all from game one that you took away? Well, game game one, I thought that it was a terrible game. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a hockey purist, so uh, which which sometimes uh, you know makes me frustrated watching hockey. But uh, I thought that game was absolutely terrible. I you know the matchups weren't there. I, they continued going with the Kuznetsov line, uh, Kuznetsov, Wilson, and, and Ovechkin at that time. They kept going with with them against the top line of Vegas. That's not their best defensive line. You've got to sell out on that top line, Barry. Uh, they they fixed it in game two. You know they went with Backstrom. Of course, they didn't really have much of a choice down the middle. They had to have that top line center as Nicholas Backstrom. So. Uh, that was one thing. I thought the transition defense was terrible. Uh, basically, what that was is exactly what I said last last week on the show. To the casual fan, that was a fun game to watch. That would be a fun game to watch. It would be a fun series to watch. That game was terrible. That was not a good game. The, the goalies were left out to dry by both teams. Uh, but, you know, Vegas will take that. I thought that if you were to say one team was better, I thought Washington was better in game one. But uh, geez, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a well played game. Yeah, I was surprised for it being game one, and uh, both of their you know I don't know if it was the jitters, I don't know what it was, but I mean both obviously both time you know these teams going for their first Stanley Cup. So uh, game two, just touching on that briefly, uh, Jake, what did you what did you take away from game two? Well, from game two, I thought that it was uh, I thought that it was equally bad i didn't think that it was well i didn't think that it was well played what i noticed in the third period obviously there was no scoring in the third period on wednesday uh but that neutral zone trap that left wing lock when you know it was almost like they set up their their four checkers like like a picket fence you had two guys in front three guys at the opponent's blue line they played washington played that perfectly that's how they beat pittsburgh is clogging up the neutral zone what I'm looking for on Saturday night is a lot more lugging of the puck from Vegas defensemen. I think Nate Schmidt's going to have a would have to have a big game. Uh, he's a really nice skating defenseman. They, some of those Vegas defensemen could just motor. So that's one thing that I took about it in the third period. They really locked it. Uh, Washington really locked it down defensively, particularly in the neutral zone. They won that game between the blue lines. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I'm interested to see it. I mean, like you said, I, I agree it should be one one right now, which it is, which is a which is a good thing. Uh, next game is tomorrow night, uh, going to Washington, staying in Washington Monday night. Uh, what do you what do you think, Jake, coming out of those next two games in Washington? Where do you see the series? I think we're going to have another split. I think Mark Andre Fleury is going to steal game three. Uh, I, I think that he's going to have a big game. He's due for it. He has had. Uh, 
Wednesday night he was really he was really good. Those three goals that he gave up, uh, he had no chance on. I thought that he cut down the angles perfectly. I thought that he was good good skating in the crease. Uh, just the thing is, his defenseman left him out to dry. He had a bad he had a bad bounce. Colin Miller didn't get in. Uh, it was completely out of the passing lane on uh, on on the one goal. I'm trying to think of who it was. It was. Um, Lars Eller's Lars Eller's goal it was completely out of the pass. He's completely out of the passing lane. That one power play goal from Ovechkin, no chance on that one either. So uh, I think I think Mark Andre Fleury is due to have a big game. I think they're going to have a split going in um, to next week. Great. Uh, well, I would also like to say that my bold, bold prediction was pretty close, Jake. I was only seven goals off from the two shots. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that wasn't too bad. I mean, I I've had. I've had better bold predictions before on this show. Uh, I, I can't really say I was too brou- proud of that one. Uh, I was, I mean, I was close. I was real, uh, okay, I'll shut up. Anyways, all right, stay, <laughs> stay with us here on the Cheap Seats. So when we come back, Jake and I are going to uh, touch a little bit on the NBA Finals, but we're excited because we're actually going to be talking about the GOAT of all four major sports. Uh, we're going to debate a little bit. I don't know how much we... I'll be honest with you. We talked about who who they are, but we haven't talked about who we think each goat for the four big sports are. So stay with us here on the Cheap Seats. Um, again, my name is Matt Coin, along with Jake Holmes. Welcome back to the Cheap Seats. Uh, Jake, I'm excited about this about this uh, segment. Uh, we kind of were talking off air about, you know, LeBron James and just how impressive it's been. Uh, as you all know, and if you don't know, if you've been living under a, a rock, we have uh, the Golden State Warriors and the Cleveland Cavaliers and the NBA Finals for the fourth year in a row, Jake. The fourth year in Ugh. a row. Uh, the more, the more impressive thing is LeBron James is in his eighth NBA finals in a row. Jake, I, I, I've made it very clear here. I don't know a lot about basketball, but eight finals in a row that just, that, that just amazes me. Uh, I don't know about you, but I think that is just all these people who complain about LeBron James and, you know, there's a point in life you have to say, you know what, eight years in a row, I, I, th- I think there's something to be said about him. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I love what uh, I love what Christian said on the Monday show, I believe, uh, about he literally got a doctorate. Like this is as liter- literally as much time as it takes to become a doctor. He's been in the NBA Finals for that many years. This is his ninth overall. Of course, the Cavaliers got swept to the Spurs in the mid 2000s. But um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's amazing what he's done. I, I, I just can't get over it. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I grew up a Chicago Bulls fan. So uh, I grew up a Chicago Bulls fan. So I, I, I hated LeBron James for a long time. I had to. I didn't have a, I didn't have another choice. But as the older I've gotten, the more you realize that, hey, maybe, you know what, this guy, this guy's this guy's pretty good. You know, he's he's <laughs> he's, he's, he's pretty good. Uh, but now, I mean. Just looking at the overall body of work, I mean, my goodness, how how can you not love the guy? I, I I just don't I just don't get it. Yeah, I you know I know people say, uh, you know, on the final side of it, you talk about Jordan. He made uh, Bulls made six uh, in eight years, uh, winning all six. Uh, LeBron obviously uh, has made it eight in a row. Uh, if they win this year, this would be his fourth. Uh, but to to be four years with one team and say, ah, okay, that's enough, go to another team and able to do that. Now, to be fair, Cleveland, um, you know, I don't think this is any secret. He His first stint in Cleveland, uh, I think he pretty much said, I'm going to Miami for a few years. You guys build this team up, and whenever you're ready, I'll come back. And uh, that's exactly what Cleveland did. So bravo to them uh, for 
you know, having a team ready to surround uh, LeBron James when he came back. So, um, you know, my question for you, uh, I'm looking at lifetime stats here. LeBron James has, has played 1,143 games. Michael Jordan played 1,072 games. So uh, people say, well, you can't compare him yet because his career's not over, uh, which is true, but they're right around the same uh, as when it comes to games. Uh, LeBron James' career, he's averaged uh, 27 points, uh, uh, seven assists uh, a game, and seven rebounds. LeBron or uh, Michael Jordan was 30 points a game, six rebounds, five assists. Uh, so... Uh, just qu- quickly, you know, kind of looking at that, obviously, th- you know, this is kind of such a, when it comes to these two, I th- in my opinion, I think it's a, it's a dumb debate. Uh, they're both obviously amazing in their time. Uh, but uh, Jake, do you, do you think LeBron James is getting close to Michael Jordan or do you think that he has passed Michael Jordan? Uh, for me, for, for me, I don't think that he. I don't think that he has passed him. I, and really, I'm not 100 percent sure he ever will. Be just because it's a one A one B scenario with yes. me. I mean, no, yeah. no doubt, LeBron James is is the best basketball player of this generation. I mean, he dunks on Kobe. You know, like yes, yeah, <laughs> for for lack of better analogy. But but the thing is, is I look at this. I look at it this way: if Michael Jordan went and went and played minor league baseball, if he went and went to the Birmingham Barons, I believe that the Chicago Bulls would have won eight straight championships in the mid nineties or in the nineties. It wouldn't have been the mid nineties. It would have been pretty much the entire nineties uh, because the Houston Rockets went at. The, uh, the Houston Rockets won it in uh, 94 and 95, mm-hmm. the Hakeem Olajuwon teams. But the thing is, is Michael Jordan, he played pretty much half of the 94-95 season. Uh, they, the, the Bulls started 23 and 25 that year. They finished off 24 and 10. They lost the, to the Knicks in the second round of the NBA playoffs. Uh, but the thing is, is Michael Jordan, 6-0 and in championship series. I know that – I know – the teams that LeBron's played on, like this one in particular, they're not going to beat Golden State. They're not. They're just not. They're, it's him, Kevin Love, and then a bunch of guys from the rec team. But you, you look at these. You look at these guys. LeBron's probably going to be three and six. Jordan six and zero oh, in in a less amount of time, really. So I, I give it to Jordan. The one. The one thing that I do want to mention about the two is the defensive accolades. Right now, you'll never say LeBron James is one of the best defensive players in the NBA, although he's made, I think, six all-defensive teams. Jordan won Defensive Player of the Year. He was named to the all-defensive team like ten times or something. Uh, Nine times, sorry. But, yeah, I mean, the overall player, I feel... The overall player, both the two-way player, Michael Jordan. The thing with the thing with LeBron is he's dynamic. You know, he could play mm-hmm. point guard, shooting guard, <laughs> small forward, center. I mean, you could put him anywhere on the court. Uh, but that's just that's just my opinion. I I'll always go with Jordan, but LeBron, I'm telling you, is a close second. The argument's certainly there. Yeah, yeah, and I I go Jordan. I mean, I, I watched him in the '90s, and. Uh... You know, like I said, I can't fairly. I, I'm sure our listeners are saying, you know, Matt, you're an idiot, and I am. I am an idiot. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, j- just being born and raised in Pittsburgh. I mean, our NBA team was the Pittsburgh Panthers. You know, I remember watching Chevy Troutman and and you know, Lan- uh, Levance Fields and all them playing. So not Levance, whatever is Fields, uh, and th- those type of players, and you know, Dewan Blair, but that's that's who I know basketball wise so um but I, I I agree I think LeBron is is getting there I think he still has a, a few good years left and I, I think that is interesting what you say about uh, about Jordan because those two years that he did for some reason go and play baseball uh, which by the way I was looking at his stats the other day I wanted to see who was better him or Tim Tebow in baseball I'm not gonna <laughs> even, I'm not gonna even bore you with those stats uh, but they're they're pretty close. Uh, in case you are curious, Tebow was, is a little better. Uh, but let's uh, go over to hockey. Uh, we wanted uh, to uh, touch on hockey. Obviously, Jake wants to touch on hockey with <laughs> with uh, Wayne Gretzky and uh, Mario Lemieux. Uh, I think these are arguably well, Wayne Gretzky definitely, and I think Lamar uh, Lamario Mario Lemieux uh, is right there with Gretzky. 
Uh, looking at stats, if you look at the stat sheet, Jake, I think anybody who knows nothing about hockey would look at a stat sheet and say, are you seriously trying to compare Mario Lemieux, Mario Lemieux with Wayne Gretzky? Uh, on paper, it's not even close, and you know that. Uh, but it's not all about that. Um, you know, obviously, you and I are a little biased for Lemieux, uh, but do you think Lemieux has a fair argument to being the best of all time in hockey? Um, I do, and I'll tell you why. And it has nothing to do with my background with the Penguins and, and you know, growing up being a huge Penguin fan. Uh, the thing with Mario is he struggled with injuries and cancer his entire yes. year. He had health issues for mm-hmm. the better part of 10 years. He has a 20... 20- 18 year career 10 of them were just riddled by injury it's 1990 had missed pretty much the in 1991 he missed pretty much that entire year with a back injury he was diagnosed with hodgkin's lymphoma in 93 he also had another back injury in 93 mm-hmm. uh missed the, all of 94 95 uh due to just being tired i mean who wouldn't be I mean, yeah. he had hodgkin's lymphoma he retired his return and then after that after his return in 2000 uh, he had continuous hip issues and uh, and battled he- uh, heart issues. So you look at that, really, he played 18 years and had these great stats, but how many of them were skewed due to issues with health and uh, and issues with health and injury? Yeah, and and I agree because, like I said, you look on paper, you just look at their at their main line, you know, with games played. Uh, Lemieux was 915, Gretzky was uh, uh, 1,487. Uh, So, I mean, that's 500, a little over 500 more games. But like you said, you got to look into the year by year where in, uh, you know, in 90, 91, he played 26 games, 93, 94, he played 22. Like you said, he completely missed the following year. And I, I struggle, any player I struggle with, taking something away from them for injuries, especially with cancer with, I mean, you just can't play. I mean, there's just, I I can't believe he even came back after that. So uh, I do agree. I think Mario Lemieux is right there with Wayne Gretzky. Uh, I I think that that is probably one of the big reasons that people, uh, you know, keep him in that conversation because for the avid hockey fan out there knows what he went through, uh, knows that Lemieux, didn't have full seasons uh, under his belt. But on the Gretzky, Gretzky side of it, uh, I mean, just it, his stats are just just disgusting. I mean, 894 goals, uh, 1,963 assists, a, a plus 520, Jake. I mean, this guy just – I remember watching him when I was little and, and just watching him fly around the ice and, and playing Wayne Gretzky hockey. You're just like, this guy is just – unbelievable a 15 time all-star uh i mean wayne gretzky definitely deserves uh to be to be where he is but like you said uh mario mario lemieux kind of (laughs) has he he had some issues and uh it's it's hard to not put him in that category and the the thing with the thing with mario too is look at what he's done post-career yeah, I mean he he played in a game he played in a game as the owner of a team. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but it's you know so if you look at the overall body of work, he's got three championships as uh, three Stanley Cups as as an owner, and you know the things that he does in Pittsburgh with community outreach, the Mario Lemieux Foundation, all that. Uh, yeah, Mario is such a phenomenal human being, uh, and I'm not saying Gretzky isn't. I just don't. I just, I don't know what kind of person Gretzky yeah, is. I, yeah, I don't. I don't. Uh, mm-hmm. But um, but you you look at Mario. He's such a good. He's such a good human being, um, and and he's he saved the Pittsburgh Penguins organization twice, not once, twice. He alone. So. Uh, so Mario, I, I I think Mario is the second best player of all time. Certainly, we're having this debate. But Gretzky is certainly number one. Fifty-nine All Star, four championships, and won the heart nine times. He won an NHL MVP nine times in twenty years. Half the times he was in, almost half the time he was an active NHL player, he won the heart. Yeah, uh, it's just disgusting. Yeah. So we'll, uh, uh, th- 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 like we said, this is a fun debate to talk about. Uh, we want to touch on football and baseball just briefly, just so we're. Uh, uh, keeping y'all here within the time. 
uh, football, uh, Jake and I were talking. Obviously, Tom Brady, uh, it has to be at the uh, – still playing, still adding on to what he has done to his resume. Uh, and we were talking, you know, J- Joe Montana uh, would probably be uh, – you know, is he is he above uh, Tom Brady when it when it comes to this? But uh, I personally think, as much as it makes me throw up, I mean, I don't know how you cannot pick Tom Brady uh, with what he has done uh, with it with with New England. You know, just his story, and I know that has nothing to do with uh, <laughs> with his actual uh, skills, but just where he has been draft or where he was drafted uh in the 6th round in 2000 uh you know by New England and and just it, it, just what he has come out to do. So uh Jake do you do you put where do you put Tom Brady Joe Montana in this? Again, this is a 1A 1B kind of thing I think, but No, I I I agree. 1A 1B for these guys and as much as it pains me to pick <laughs> against a Ringgold High School guy. Yes. Ringgold High School uh, in you know, in in the outskirts of Pittsburgh, PA, uh, I got to go with Brady. Uh, five Super Bowls, it's unprecedented. You know, most teams don't even have five Super Bowls. You know, yeah. all but all but four teams have five Super Bowls. Three time MVP, has got over sixty six thousand passing yards. Uh, the thing that separates that the thing that the separation for me comes with their t- with what they have access to. Mm-hmm. Montana had Jerry Rice. Tom Brady had Randy Moss for what? two years, three yeah. years, you know, he's doing this with Julian Edelman, who really on any other team would probably be a special teamer, yep. you know, Wes Welker. So, uh, that's uh, Gronkowski. Sorry for, for leaving him out, but he's a tight end. I mean, he's, he's a freak of nature genetically, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, you look at what they have access to and what they've had access to throughout their whole year, whole their whole career. I think it's, I think that it's Brady, uh, you know, over Montana. Yeah. And that's, and I, 100 percent agree with you that is why i i put tom brady at at the top of the list i know people want to say well he cheated and blah 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 but you know what he doesn't just like you said tom wilson doesn't have to be a goon tom brady doesn't have to cheat Uh, exactly to to see who he has had on his team like you said other than randy moss um he, he hasn't had that high profile wide receiver and when he did have randy moss look what he did I mean, he just <laughs> that that year that he had Randy Moss. I'm trying to look here to see. Uh, I can just look at the touchdowns because that's just when he destroyed touchdowns. Hey, he had, he had over fifty, I think. Yeah, he had over fifty. Uh, yes. Yeah, here it is. It's right here. 2007. Uh, he had 4,806 yards, 50 touchdowns. Um, I mean that that is just he averaged 300 yards a game. <laughs> His rating that year was one seventeen point two. Uh, I, I mean that that's just it's just like look what he did when he had that. And you know I know people uh, when Braylon Cooks came in they're like ah oh, that's gonna be you know they got rid of him and everybody's like why would you he doesn't need him and that's the thing about Tom Brady you bring in a mid level wide receiver and he's gonna make them into a thousand yard receiver and it look look what happens when they leave like you said Edelman. Before he came, uh, I think after he leaves, they they turn into nothing or they end up being nothing because Tom Brady, I, I think he just says, bring in as long as they can catch, I'll I'll get the ball to him. Yeah, Danny Amendola. Danny Amendola is a playoff hero because of Tom Brady. Yes, he got paid because of Tom Brady. He's not, <laughs> you know, it, it, Danny Amendola is nothing more than you know a three or a four slot receiver. You yeah. know, yeah, Tom Brady, I I, I just. Like you said, as much as it kills me, as much as uh, t- to say this, I mean, I just think, in my opinion, in, in any sport, I-, I think he is one of the only ones that doesn't really have somebody to contend with him. You know, John Joe Montana had a much, not a much shorter career, but had a shorter career. Uh, so, you know, it's hard to say. I'm sure people out there are, are uh, you know, saying, well, what about this player? What about that player? There, there's been so many quarterbacks, it's it's really hard to... To, you know, to really – and it's a different time, too. I mean, Joe Montana uh, played in a time where, uh, you know, rushing the ball was huge. Now it's it's a passing league. Uh, so yeah. uh, defense yeah, is almost non-existent in today's day, day and age. So uh, let's go over to baseball real quick. 
Uh, this is a hard one for uh, Jake and myself because – uh, there is just so – baseball is such a – you can go back so far, and uh, there are just so many players that you think, you know, in a position player, you have Ruth Bonds, who a lot of people argue say he doesn't deserve there because of the steroids. Uh, you have Mays, Ted Williams, Hank Aaron. Uh, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to pick the best position player of all time. But then the pitchers, you have – uh, Chris, uh, Math- Matthewson, you have Randy Johnson, Cy Young, Pedro Martinez, San- Sandy Koufax. You could keep going on with the pitchers if you want. Uh, you know, I didn't even include in that list Nolan Ryan. I didn't include uh, Bob Gibson. Didn't include Greg Maddox, uh, Roger Clemens. I mean, Clayton, uh, you know, a lot of people will argue Clayton Kershaw, Jake. Uh, I think he's too young to be in that in that but to be considered in that race Clayton Kershaw uh still being active that's pretty impressive <laughs> oh yeah certainly I mean the thing is Kershaw I mean it's not even like he's you know a, a 35 year old vet you know I mean it's not like he's you know been in the league as long as like Cole Hamels or anything you know what I yeah. mean uh but yeah I mean like you said you know it's baseball's so tough to judge the quote goat you know i mean you know, it's 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 so tough because it's been going on since the, pretty much the beginning of time yeah. you know <laughs> uh, yeah. you know you have christy matthews and cy young walter johnson in the early ni- 1900s um and then as you've progressed you know you get into pedro uh randy johnson all that um my guy i mean if you know i know you touched on him a little bit my guy uh, as far as pitchers concerned, if you listen to the show, you mention you hear me mention the the '90s Braves a lot. Yeah. Uh, Greg Maddox is my favorite athlete of all time. Oh. Gre- uh, he's the reason I wear number thirty one sixer. Interesting. But, um, I did not know yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. Greg Maddox, thirty uh, three hundred and fifty five and two twenty seven career ERA of three sixteen. But the 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 highlight there was of course the mid nineties ninety two to ninety eight. You look at his ERA from ninety two to ninety eight. His earned run average two fifteen. His WHIP uh, walks and hits per innings pitched is point nine seven. Each of which were half of the league average at that time because baseballs were pretty much spewing steroids out of them, uh, out of yeah, the stitches yeah. at that time. So uh, Greg Maddox, that's why, you know, 18-time gold glove. I know for pitchers it's a little weird, but, um, you know, he's a good defensive player, uh, four-time Cy Young, eight-time All-Star. Greg Maddox, I mean, that, that's that's my guy. I saw – I was looking up some some lists. I mean, pretty much everyone had him in, in the top ten. Yeah. I don't know if he's the best of all time, but he's one that's certainly worth noting. And his command of the strike zone was unbelievable, unlike really anybody in this whole generation. Yeah, I mean, that that's how I felt in our softball league, Jake, is I, I feel like I will go down as uh, probably the best <clears throat> pitcher. I'm joking. Uh, I agree. <laughs> best best pitcher in Norman <laughs> Fellowship League history. Uh, that's that, that was some fun times I, I, I yes. miss play, playing there. So, uh, But you heard, you know, what we had to say. Uh, uh, <clears throat> it's Especially with baseball, I think it's hard. The other sports, it's uh, something that – uh, it's, you know, there's a couple of sports. You got these, you know, kind of a 50, 50, uh, in football. I think it's just so, I think it's Tom Brady has just surpassed everyone now. Um, but, uh, it's, it's always an interesting conversation to have and I enjoyed having it here. So, uh, hope you stay with us here on the cheap seats for this Friday edition. Uh, when we come back, we're going to be touching on the major league baseball. The, I don't know why I said the Major League Baseball. That was weird. <laughs> Anyways, uh, stay with us, and you can see us on the Facebook. Anyways. <laughs> okay, I'm going to shut up now, Jake. Stay with us. We'll be back in a little bit. Side, Jake Holmes. Uh, as always, don't forget to follow us on our Facebook page uh, at The Cheap Seats, and you can find us on phmedia.com. Uh, we are obviously presented by Public House Media, 
And every single uh, Monday, you can join Christian and Jonathan. Wednesday with Keith and Max. And then Friday, if after listening to this show, you still want to put up with us, Matt and Jake. <laughs> uh, so, Jake, we're going to get into baseball. Uh, we uh, are two bitter fans right now. Uh, and uh, I, somebody last night, Jake, I have youth group on Wednesday nights. And one of the parents came up to me and goes, so how about them pirates? How do you feel about them? I said, really? Are, are you kidding me? I said, of, of course I'm not surprised by this. You know, I'm not surprised that two weeks ago we were talking about the Pirates being in first place. And, Jake, they are six games out of first place now. Now, with that said, the Milwaukee Brewers have gone on an absolute tear, an absolute tear, uh, going eight and two in their last uh, ten games. Uh, just they're pitching out of their mind right now. They're scoring runs just left and right. Uh, so uh, let's just start in the central. Uh, you know, we got the Brewers in first. That and this is the other crazy thing, Jake. Two weeks ago, we were talking about four teams separated by a half of a game. Uh, we have the Bre- Brewers in first, Chicago Cubs in second at four and a half games out, uh, St. Louis at five games out, and then the Pirates at six games out, and then the Cellar Dwellers with the Reds at 16 games out. So, Jake, do you think this is more of Milwaukee? just playing out of their mind right now do you think this this division starting to settle where we thought it was going to be at the beginning of the year right now this is exactly where i picked this division milwaukee first chicago second st louis third pittsburgh then cincinnati uh what what do you think is what what do you think is going on here in the central well first of all i do want to say wouldn't it be so nice to have a small market team that was willing to go and trade prospects and you know prospects and assets for big time players you know i mean that would be nice in a small market but not everyone uh, not not everyone does that you yeah, know and silly. that's what and that's what the brew crew have done correctly yeah uh you know they went out and they got they got big players in the off season. they got you know the christian yelich's of the world you know things like that you know affordable players but still really really good players and the brewers again you know the, the, like you said they're on a tear they're eight and two in their last ten um, you know, at least, you know, eight and two in their last 10, having a good, you know, like you said, a, a good, a good run here. Um, but, but the Cubs, the Cubs are still there and, you know, you know, we're, we're a little salty with the Cubs right now, but, uh, they're still a really good team. You know, mm-hmm. they're, they're still a really good team. Their, their rotation is out of control. And, you know, the thing is with the Pirates, you know, the, the issue was, uh, you know, after Marte got hurt, uh, just, you know, two or three weeks, or sorry, two weeks ago, um, that's when it really started to seem like it was, you know, kind of going <laughs> going downhill but uh so there is some good that's come out of the pirates recently austin meadows has been fantastic mm-hmm. i don't think that you can i don't think that you can send him down or do anything with him he's got to be in the lineup he's been their best i think their best player over the last two weeks um also fun story if you look at him and look at me at the same time you won't know which one's I, which <laughs> yeah that is that is insane to me i uh you know i wanted to congratulate you for your call up a couple weeks ago thank you and, uh, thank yeah, you it's uh but yeah i mean this division i think it's just starting to take shape i mean we're you know we're approaching a halfway mark uh mark here uh you have you know the the cubs are just i mean they scored 272 runs this year they are uh they're a good team. They're they're gonna they're four and a half out. I don't see that uh, staying that way. Uh, but you know the the thing that uh, real quick, Jake. This is crazy. You, this might this might be painful for you. This weekend, I will actually be in St. Louis for a wedding. And do you know who the Pirates are playing this weekend? Jeez, uh, I can't even remember. They playing the Cards. Yeah, they're playing the Cards yeah. in yeah, St. Right. Louis, and I can't go. Oh, like that is seriously making me. Pain. I, I said I have a chance to watch the Pirates play the Cardinals in St. Louis, and I can't go. I'm thinking about skipping the rehearsal dinner. Do you think anybody will be upset? I was gonna say, see, you know, see, you know, see what the see what the wife thinks about it. You know, I mean, you know, I'm not get, I'm not, I'm not getting married. I mean, I, I'm just gonna be standing there anyways. I've already got married. You know, exactly. I, I'm, I've been happily married for five years. I, I think I can miss. Like seriously, I, I was talking to her the other night. I said this is killing me because I was joking. I went, I wonder what the chances are of the Pirates playing St. Louis while I'm there, and they're playing them. I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> I'll, I'll get to see him play in Milwaukee later this year, so that's cool. But anyways, uh, 
I wanted to touch, uh, you know, there's a lot of just great races going on right now. We got in the East, we have the Red Sox and the Yankees still battling out. Their uh, Yankees are two games behind. The next closest team is the Rays at 10 games. Uh, I, I think this is going to go down to uh, to the end of the season. I don't see uh, I don't see this race between the Yankees and the Red Sox ending anytime soon. No, I mean they're they're the two juggernauts I think of the entire league. I mean two of the three juggernauts I look at, uh, you know, with those two in the Astros. I think that those are the three best teams in baseball. But um, but yeah, I mean the thing the thing about it is is Boston Red Sox the Boston Red Sox right now have probably the MVP front runner in my opinion. Mookie Betts, dude's batting like three sixty or something. He's just ridiculous yeah. and good defensively as well. And the Yankees they can score runs just. You know, again, they have four four players with ten plus home runs already. You know, we're almost two months into this. We're almost two months into the season. We are two months into the season. They started early this year, but still, that's a really impressive number. They're second in the league, I believe, in total runs scored behind mm-hmm. Boston. But uh, but the thing is, there's no easy out on that team. You know, I mean, from one through nine, they are they're all um, you know really good offensive players. Like you said, that that race is going to go on until October. Uh, no one's going to go anywhere, and the top wild card team might have the second best record <laughs> yep. in uh, in the American League, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, and that's that. Well, that happened a few years ago in the uh, NL with uh, with the Central. You had uh, two, the two best records playing each other in the uh, in the uh, uh, Pirates well, Cubs. It, yeah, it was Pirates Cubs, and then yeah. the winner of that had to go and play the best record with, with St. Yeah. Louis. So, uh, you know, the, the one team that it's just. Just I don't know why they're. I mean I I know why they're impressing me. It's just amazing to watch the Astros. Uh, though they don't have the best record. I mean their run their run support's not terrible. Which I don't understand how they're only thirty five and twenty two. They have scored two hundred eighty three runs and have only let up one hundred and sixty. Jake, that is an average of two point eight runs a game. Uh, they have scored one hundred and twenty three more runs. They've let up. And like I'm being serious, how are they only twenty thirty five and twenty two? I you know what you know what the only thing and I was looking at this number two the other day um, because I was like, geez, you'd think that the Astros would be you know would be better than thirteen games over. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, thirteen games over at the time at least. But um, but I I I remember seeing a lot of one nothing games, a lot of two to one games. Mm-hmm. You know, but they've they they also can. They also they also can hit the ball. You know, of course they can hit the ball. They can score. You know, the six to ten. You know, I mean, they're 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 a weird team like that. But the thing is, is they've got four aces, and even their even their five their five guy Charlie Morton's having an awesome year. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's it's crazy what it's crazy what they what they're doing. And it, you know, you look at a rotation like that, they're going to be almost impossible to beat in the playoffs because two of those guys can go to the pen. Yeah. You know, I mean, like it, it's just it's. I I don't even know what to say. I have no idea how you can build a pitching staff like that. And Justin Verlander's having maybe the best year of his career. Well, one of the best years of his career. He's thirty five. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's just as old as his numbers. So, uh, so yeah. I mean, uh, Houston, they're unbelievable. The American League is so stacked. It's just it's it's kind of disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you look at their starting rotation here. I mean, this is I don't know if you've looked at their rotation here, ERA wise, Jake, but I want to give this to you. Verlander has a 1.1 ERA. Uh, uh, Dallas Kirchel, I can never say. There's some names I just struggle saying. Uh, he mm-hmm. has a 3.65 ERA. Garrett Cole, a 2.05. Charlie Morton, a 2.26. Uh, and then McCullers has a 3.98. Garrett Cole has 109 strikeouts this year. Uh, I mean, it, it, when you have a when you have everyone on your starting rotation has less than a four ERA. I, that's just, that's just sick to me in this day and age. That, that's, oh, no, I know pitching, you know, his, his, um, you know, people are saying, well, you know, the pitching has gotten better and I understand that, but, uh, I just think it's amazing that a starting rotation of five, uh, with ERAs like that, especially Verlander at a one, one ERA, that's just, that, that's just disgusting. 
And even if you like, even if you like the the strikeout numbers, Garrett Cole, uh, he never did this in Pittsburgh, uh, but um, but uh, Garrett Cole, 109 strikeouts and only like 11 starts or something. Yeah. I mean, that's that's almost that's almost 10 strikeouts a game. You know, I mean, it's 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 unbelievable. It's unbelievable yeah. how good how good that rotation is. Yeah. So we have uh, going over to the NL. We we have another close race still going on in the East uh, Nationals, a game and a half up on the Braves. Uh, the Phillies still are surprising me this year at a game and a half out. Uh, then you have the Mets at four and a half, Marlins 12 and a half, so not really even close with them. But then the West, all of a sudden, top to bottom is close. Uh, we got the uh, Rockies ahead of the Diamondbacks by a game and a half, Dodgers three and a half out, uh, Giants four, Padres six and a half. So, Jake, what, what, uh, just closing this segment, what in the NL, um, What's what's the surprise team for you this year? And then the AL, what's your surprise team? Well, I think the Braves, honestly. I mean, uh, you know, the Braves coming into this year, I mean, how many players could you really, you know, how many players could the casual fan really name? You know, yeah, Julio Terrahan, of course, Freddie Freeman, maybe. Yeah. Um, but and Dansby, Sp- Dansby, Spons- Dansby Swanson. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. He's a f- fantastic player as well. But, you know, the the guys that are, you know, surrounding them i mean who you know they're they're a good young team they're a couple years ahead of schedule or the atlanta braves Mm -hmm. and it's good i mean i'm glad to see the braves i think baseball's better when the braves are good just because of like their history and all that uh but i'm just i'm just waiting on the washington nationals to just blow away that division but in the the national league i'll say i'll say the atlanta braves are the the surprise team um also finally the seattle mariners we've been waiting for them uh i've been wa- i've been waiting on them for for years since they got robinson cano to actually do something with their life yeah. but um seattle oh, no. obviously yeah robbie cano if you <laughs> don't you know but um <laughs> don't oh no but uh but yeah i mean he's out but i mean they're st- they're they're still playing really good baseball i mean they're only one or two games behind the Astros. I think the Astros are also going to kind of take a stranglehold on that division. But Seattle, finally, finally. Thank you, Seattle. They're actually doing something. So um, I'm happy about that. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'm interested in baseball. I'm a huge baseball fan. I'm interested to see uh, how these uh, division races, uh, you know, progress through the year going up, especially into the all-star break. Uh, stay with Jake and myself. When we come back, we'll give you our bold predictions as well as our poll question. Uh, and uh, we'll sign off for this week. Stay with us. Again, Matt Coyne with Jake Hall. Welcome back to the Cheap Seats, Matt Coyne alongside Jake Holmes. And coming into our closing segment, just like every Friday, we will give you our bold predictions. Uh, mine from last week was just a little off, uh, Jake, just just a tad. Um, it was actually, I probably could have said, I think there's going to be 10 goals scored uh, by one team in the first uh, game, and I would have been closer than having a shutout. Uh, but this week, uh, I'm going to go on the basketball side. And I'm going to go <clears throat> with – I've been on the LeBron James train, but I'm going to go Steph Curry will score 45 points in game one. No, I'm sorry, not game one, game two of the finals. Uh, he will score 45 points, and I'm not done yet. You ready for this? Oh, I'm ready. Okay. He will score 45 points, and the Cavaliers – will outscore the Warriors by 20 points. Wow. Okay. I know. I, okay. s- sometimes I'm just – I got to come up with strange stuff. I, uh, You know, if this if one of these ever hits, Jake, I'm just – people are going to say you're an idiot, but then they're going to hit, and I'm going to be like, no, I'm not the idiot. I'm just a really good guesser. <laughs> What's your bold prediction this week? <laughs> so last week I was right. I, it wasn't bold at all, actually. Shame on me for think for actually saying it. I had a split. Uh, Washington would steal home ice. I wish I would have said Brooks or pick goal. I mean, that yeah, would've, that would have been uh, even bigger. Old wide eyes. 
elation. But um, I'm going to say that there's going to be a hat trick in the next ah, two games. That's or, a good uh, one. That's a good I'm gonna one. say it's gonna come in. I'm gonna say that it's gonna come on Monday. I'm gonna say that it's gonna come Game Four. I um, mean, it's going to be from a Vegas Golden Knights player. It's gonna be a surprise player. I'm gonna just to throw a name out there. I'm gonna say Jonathan Marjusso. There we go. Well, you heard it right here. Uh, Jake has a legit bold prediction. Mine is just stupid. Uh, but <laughs> hey, if it hits, you you never know. We'll we'll have to see. But we should start keeping track of. I don't even know why. I mean, you were right last week, but. Uh, Again, I'm normally wrong. I think I've gotten like two right in our bold predictions. But uh, poll question this week, uh, Jake and I talked a little bit in depth about uh, the GOAT debate for the four major sports. Our question for you, uh, and you can find this on our Facebook page, uh, will, will be, would you be willing to include a, quote, steroid era player in the best of all time conversation for major league baseball. Uh, Jake and I talked about this off the air. We ha- uh, we know what we would say. What say you? Uh, again, go to our the Cheap Seats uh, Facebook page and you can uh, chime in on that, yes or no. Again, would you be willing to include a steroid player, uh, player uh, in the best of all time when it comes to the major leagues? Uh, Join us again here on Monday uh, with Christian and Jonathan. Again, Wednesday with uh, Max and Keith. Uh, We are presented by the Public House Media. Listen to us on iTunes, Google Podcast, uh, Spreaker, any place that you can get your uh, podcast. Uh, Visit us at thephmedia.com. Jake, don't forget you can get your swag on there for the cheap seats. Uh, Mugs, cell phone cases, hats, uh, and pretty much anything you want with TCS, you can get that uh, on there. Uh, like us on our Facebook page, and as always, we have our daily poll question from our shows. Jake, any final thoughts? Any final thoughts? I think we're going to – I mean, we're on pace for a seven-game Stanley Cup final, 1-1 as of right now. I, mean, I think that's going to split going back. Um, into uh, going headed back to Vegas, uh, you know, just keep watching that. I mean, we're, it's it's a really entertaining series. Again, if you you know if you listen to the whole thing, I mean, it's not very well played, but uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's entertaining and it's it's really great uh, if you're st- if you're you know just getting into hockey, which uh, which a lot of people in this country are with a new market in Vegas, and it's great for the league that they're in it. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm excited to see what happens there. We've got the NBA Finals, as always, going on at the same time. Uh, so join, I'm sure Christian and Jonathan will have a lot to say about it on Monday. Uh, and again, join us here next Friday with Jake and myself. And you all have a fantastic weekend. Thank you for joining us. We will see you all next week. <laughs>